Hello, my name's Andrew and welcome aboard my yacht Windswept. Plan A was to do this in the classroom, but I thought, why? We navigate on the boat, so why not do this on the boat? Far better, a bit more real. During the course of this, um, this video, I will be referring to the Introduction to Navigation section, uh, uh, e ebook that I wrote, and it will be useful to have a copy of it when you're watching the video. If you don't have a copy, then either go to windswepttrainingvideos.com or click the link at the bottom of the page. But it would be useful to have it with you when you're watching the video. Tools of the trade. Obviously, this lot. Um, the basis of any system is the uh, or any system of electronics is the GPS, which gives us our position. It talks to all the other instruments, basically. Um, there's no end of instruments. I've got here. I've got a Navtex, which provides a lot of useful information on um, security, weather, etc., etc. Here is the AIS radar. Um, that it's not actually a radar, but it does tell us where all the, all the bigger shipping is, as they're obliged to carry it. And the VHF is the other essential. Chart plotters also we use. I've got one up by the wheel, um, and also we've got the radar. I mean, I don't have a full radar, but a lot of yachts do. The main problem with using electronics is that water and electricity have a certain affinity for one another. One short and you could lose the lot. If you haven't written down your position somewhere then you're lost immediately. So we have to then do it the old-fashioned way as well. So, shall I get on with it? Right, to the tools of the trade. Various ones. Um, pencils, rubber, dividers, plotter. I know it looks horrendously complicated, but I assure you it isn't. And chart. We also have what is, in effect, our Bible. Massive amount of information in the Nautical Almanacs. For example, we've got um, search and rescue information, safety equipment, all the marine call, the weather information, um, navtex broadcasts, weather, flags, communications, you name it, it's in here. Very, very useful. A lot on tide as well, on how to calculate tide. The other thing it has got is it covers various different sections. The Round Britain, for example, is split up into about half a dozen different areas. Each sea area has a picture of it um, as well. But let's look at a particular entry. Let's say Falmouth, for instance. If we were going into Falmouth, the first thing we'd do is read up on it in here. So what's it got? It tells us what chart it's on, um, tides, shelter, navigation, speed limits, lights and marks, communications, facilities. Now obviously Falmouth and the River Fowl is quite a large area, so that covers quite a bit. So what facilities are all this lot. Um, with little warnings and again it tells you the um, prices as well. Next we have the chartlet. This covers the harbour in this case. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's got detailed voyage and details of the marinas and everything else all over it. Very useful to look at and to, th 
to have up on deck when you're actually going in so you can actually see what what boys are supposed to be where. Over the page here we have the tidal curve that tells us about springs and neap, neap ranges and we use this in order to um, calculate the height of a tide. Also as Falmouth is a standard port we have tide tables for it. Things, I mean, th this is the format that it follows right the way through. But, and this covers from the tip of Denmark to Gibraltar. So it's pretty wide area, isn't it? Right, looking at the other tools of the trade, we have various things. Firstly, the pencil. Very important, and you obviously have to have a pencil sharpener as well or some means of sharpening it. Go for a 2B pencil rather than an HP or anything harder than that because the harder the pencil the more difficult it is to rub out added to which it'll rip your chart to pieces in time and this is a chart I use quite regularly um, and had I used an HP pencil on it by now it would have been long gone so a 2B pencil is essential. The most useful piece of kit, the rubber. You will definitely need one of these. Other items are dividers. These are referred to as single-handed dividers because you can work them single-handed. Okay. Like and the plotter. And of course, the most important of the lot, the chart. We just zoom in a little bit on this chart. Right, looking at this area here, you can see it's littered with numbers. These numbers are depths. They're not actual depths of water, they're depths below what's referred to as chart datum. Chart datum is basically the lowest astronomical tide, or the lowest tide that's ever been recorded. Um, but we need a reference point. Obviously the, the, the depth of water is constantly changing because of the um, changes in tide height. So looking here, we've got a figure here of 22 metres. That's below chart datum. So if we had a height of tide of two and a half meters, our echo sounder should be reading 24 and a half in that position. If I move the chart down a little bit, let's have a look at the writing on it. Right, to begin with, the title of the chart. Who made it here? In this case it's him, Ray, Laurie, Norrie and Wilson that made it. Now, there are many sorts of charts, or not many sorts of charts, many um, chart makers, and they all vary between each other. Personally, I like the um, Imre, because as my one of my granddaughters tells me, a five year old, green is land, yellow is sand, blue is sea. Now, if a five year old can deal with that, so I hope can we. The sand, in other words, the yellow doesn't necessarily mean it's sand. What it means is that is an area that dries. In other words, it is above chart datum. So, for example, here we have point 0.8. So the zero is underlined. That tells us it's a drying height. So that's point 0.8 of a metre above. The Yeah, 0.8 of a metre above chart datum. So if, let's say, we had, make maths easy, 
1.8 meters high to tide, that means there'd be the water there would be one meter deep. There are always pieces of information on the chart. Let me just run over to the other side. Covering all sorts um, from the top, which you can't quite see, it's Portsmouth Harbour. General information. Um, telling you generally about the harbour and the difficulties. Then, in purple on Admiralty charts, in darkish red on Imre charts, you have warnings. For example, historic wrecks. Wrecks are very often classed as um, Yeah, wrecks are often classed as cemeteries simply because a lot of people died on them. This particular historic wreck refers to the Mary Rose, which is just outside Portsmouth. Again, firing practice area, and there's an exclusion zone around the naval base here. Going on from this, other useful information. Things like the yacht club phone numbers and, and all that side of things. So that's the chart. The dividers are here to measure distances. These are classed as one-handed dividers simply because you can use them one-handed. See? They're used, as I say, for measuring distances. For example, between here, this is 46, 15 degrees 46 minutes north. This is 50 degrees 47 minutes north. So from here to here is a mile. So, for example, if you want to stay a mile off Fort Gilkicker there, which is there, we would have to pass very close to this North Cardinal Boy here. So that's the dividers. The plotter looks complex. What we have is a grid on the base plate here. You can see it. And we also have a rotating compass like that. So let's think the easiest way to show you is just to uh, demonstrate. Let's say the bearing to this point here, the light again, is 280 degrees true. What I do is I line up the 280 here with the zero. We then place this down on the chart, passing through the point we're measuring to. We then turn them round until one of these lines on this grid lines up with the latitude and longitude. Again, if we were a mile away from it, we'd measure our mile here and measure down. Let's just move them back into place. There. That would put us there. See, measured a mile from there, puts us in that position. That is a whistle stop tour through um, the tools of the trade, and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. Thank you.